Good morning. Today, I'm, good, I'm talking to black women over 60 uh, who are starting to feel invisible. I'm also talking to black women who will one day be over 60. Uh, I want to talk to you today about my experiences as a person who kind of has lived like a retiree since I was 41, right? Since I was 41. So for the past eight years now, eight years yesterday, eight years ago yesterday, I started my life as a retiree, basically. Um, and uh, so I want to talk to the women over 60 who might be feeling a little bit invisible um, now that work is not the center of their life or hopefully is soon won't be if it ever was. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about today. This is not only for the women over 60. Y'all got together and gave me wonderful advice on a video not too long ago called Black Women Over 60 Give Me Life Advice. So time to return the favor, okay? But if you're new here, welcome. My name is Stephanie Perry. I'm a house sitter. I'm the creator of House Sitter School. I'm the co-creator of Exodus Summit. I help black women take a sabbatical, move abroad, bop around as a nomad, all while embracing ease. If these things sound good to you, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. Yes, subscribe. Thank you. And then turn on the notifications. Ring that notification bell so that you'll be notified when I go live or when I post a new video. Welcome. And welcome everybody in the chat. Hey, Valerina. Hey, Dana. Hey, Lynn. How's everybody? Feel her fire? Good morning. The Holistic Health and Wellness Boss? Good morning. Good morning, Travel Pray, travel, eat. Good morning, Cinderella Branch and Angie and Georgette. How's everybody? Hey, Net Moore. Hi, Kathy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I said yesterday, but it was really two days ago. September 21st is the day I left, uh, got on the plane and went to Southeast Asia, which I thought was going to be a one-year sabbatical and ended, ended up being a whole new life. Good morning, LA Teacher One. Good morning, Clova. Good morning, D. Good morning, Kiva. Good morning, MASH 2031. Hi, my stethoscope travels in Althea and Jessica. Hey, Adrian. Hey, Cassandra. Hey, April. Hi, Mom. There's my mom. Good morning, Connie Perry. All right, good morning, friends. Okay, uh, can we get a, also, while you're saying good morning or after you're done saying good morning, can you also give us a roll call who is, oh, happy birthday, Cinderella. Oh, happy birthday. Hey, Sharice. Hey, Onward. Hey, Ngozi. Um, yeah, I'm in Houston. I got, we got a lot to cover. We got a lot to cover today. We got a lot to cover. <laughs> All right. So, um, can we get a roll call here? Um, well, I'll let you finish saying good morning and let me introduce things, introduce the, vi the video for the day. And then I'll get a roll call on who's over 60 in just a second. Be patient. Okay. So first let's talk about who am I to give advice <laughs> to black women over 60. Uh, September 21st, 2015, I quit my job to travel for a year on savings. I went to Southeast Asia and I did travel for a year on savings, but I also never went back to life work. I never went back to work life is what I mean. I never went back to work being the center of things and trying to fit the rest of my life in around work and jobs. Um, and so I've kind of lived in a way that mostly only retirees have been able to live up until now, up until recently. Um, living like a retiree to me means I have had location freedom and time freedom. And although I wouldn't say I have financial freedom, I do have the money to enjoy my location freedom and my time freedom, right? I got location freedom, I got time freedom, and I got the money to enjoy those things. Uh, some of that in, uh, help, house sitting helps, right? Being a house sitter has helped. But these things are um, things that, generally speaking, we don't get until we're retired, until we're 65, 71, right? I've gotten to live them younger. And so I think I have some tips, some advice, some steps for Black women 60 plus. Also, Black women... Uh, who will one day be 60 plus, okay? Which I hope is all of us, <laughs> okay? Um, don't take offense, women over 60, okay? Don't take offense to me thinking I can give you advice. I'm 49, don't take offense to that. My life has changed from information, advice, 
uh, and following the steps of younger people. My life changed. I'm Gen X. My life really has changed by listening to the guidance that millennials are giving us on how to do things a different way. And the Gen Z, right, how to do things a different way. And so I'm just passing it on. OK, I'm just passing it on. I'm in a hotel. The roof, the lighting is OK, but the sun is going to do weird things to the picture. I'm in the, I'm in hotel to I mean, I'm in I'm in hotel. I'm in Houston to see Beyonce tonight. I get to see Beyonce tonight. So I'm in Houston. I'm in a hotel room. And, uh, you know, lighting is going to be funny. It's in my face. I closed the sheer curtain, but I don't want to close the curtain curtain or it's just going to be so dark in here. It's, you know, OK. OK, let's get a roll call. Who's over 60? Who's close to 60? Uh, who can't wait to be 60? Who's nervous about being 60 in the future? Go ahead and give a roll call in the chat. OK, I'm going to tell you the eight. Tips or steps or whatever, eight things. I'm gonna tell them to you now. While we're doing this roll call, I'll tell you what we're gonna talk about for the next hour and a half. Okay, we're gonna cut it off. I'm a, I gotta leave it at a decent time today because I'm also going to the Houston meetup for Exodus Summit at lunchtime, brunch time. Okay, so here are the eight things that I'm going to tell black women over 60 as a woman who has lived like a 60 something year old for quite a while now. <laughs> Number one, stay in community with younger and older black women. Number two, uh, you're actually midlife, spoiler alert. Number three, if you're afraid of healthcare costs, consider a new country. Number four, you don't have to go alone. Number five, but you can do it alone. Number six, house sit. You're welcome. House sitting is wonderful. You'll love it. Number seven, tell your friends, older and younger and the same age, what you're enjoying about being over 60. Okay? We, I, I've talked a lot about not wanting, not, mm -mm, no, no, no. I've not talked about not wanting to age. I've talked about not wanting to look my age. There's some fear of aging in here, right? And who wants that? Who wants to be afraid of getting, getting older? Like that means the only alternative is death, right? <laughs> Either I stop or I get older. So it, I think there's some help that women over 60 could give us by spreading around the world what they love about being older uh, that could help us not be so afraid of becoming older. And the eighth step is you'll feel less invisible in Latin America. In case you can't tell, this whole video is designed to get y'all to move abroad. Okay, I think <laughs> this whole channel, not just this whole video, this whole channel. My nails are wet, wet. I just painted my nails. And so that's why I'm doing weird things with my hands. I'm going to try to put them down, like use my hands like a human. <laughs> I'm going to try to use my hands like a human, but I can see that I'm doing all of this. Uh, it's because I like literally just finished painting my nails. Okay. Busy, busy Saturday. We have a busy Saturday. Okay. I got the YouTube video. I got to go to the meetup. I got to come back and get prepared for the meetup. I got to go see Beyonce. Busy, busy day. Which required me to paint my nails at 8.30 in the morning. Okay. All right. So how did the roll call go? Let's go back. Let's go back to where I said do a roll call. Let's see who's here this morning um, and where you fall in the over 60 or under 60 or close to 60 or afraid of becoming 60 um, group. Let's see. Rashida says I'm close to 60. Good morning, Rashida. Good morning. Kylethia, hi, a new name. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, sustainable Steph, sustainable staff, close to 60. Elaine Gordon, 71. Whoop, whoop. Margaret, 62. Okay, good. Love Living Life by Design, 60. Cassandra, 58. Erlene, over 60 and loving it. Thank you. Um, save that for later. 60, Vanita. Me, okay, Ngozi, over 60. Our Cinderella, I think that's your waving 
over 60? I'm not sure if it, that's just a wave. Oh, no, that's a birthday wave. Happy birthday, Fran. Diane Miller, over uh, 61. Okay. Kathy, 60 this year. Gina, 64. Diane is over 60. Carmelia, Carmel 62. Okay. So, yeah, April in paradise. D, everybody's over 60. Uh, so, apparently, <laughs> everybody's over 60. Okay, good. Okay. Look at y'all. Hi, friends. 58, Pilar. Me and Pilar are, <laughs> we're bringing up the rear here. <laughs> yes, I'm going to have a wonderful time. I can't wait. We're going to talk about that later. Yes. Okay, over 60, over 60, 64, 62, 61, 60 next month. Okay, friends. Okay, we did it. <laughs> we did it. Donna, Donna's the youngest. Okay, Donna's the youngest in the group. <laughs> Marilyn, Carmen, 60, 55. Stephanie says she's 55 and excited to be 60, 61. Okay, closer to 50 than 60. Okay, in a few years, 67, 64. Okay, so we have an audience of women here who I think will be able to understand this conversation then, okay? If you're much younger than this, listen and take notes, okay? Because you're going to be here, okay? You're going to be here. All right, thanks, friend. Oh, 65. Happy birthday, Cinderella, 65. Oh, look at you guys. Okay. I'm so glad you're here. All right. So 56 and nervous about approaching 60. Okay. Clover, real talk. Okay. Um, so my, the reason I wanted to do this is women over 60 have given me wonderful advice, uh, recently on a video and just in general, women over 60 have, have hit a point in your life where you will tell it like it is right. Say what you need to say without, you know, holding back. I appreciate that about you. Um, and so I want to share some things that share what I can share with you because y'all share so openly with me and with the rest of the women on this channel. Okay. So number one thing that I think I want to shout out to black women over 60 is to stay in community with older and younger women. It's, it might be hard to stay in community with younger women because younger women are busy working. Okay. <laughs> But find places where you can stay in community with them, like this channel, like the Exodus Summit Facebook group. Um, it really has been helpful to me to get some um, perspective on life from younger people. They just have a different approach to things. They know that the way things have been done is not the way that they want to continue to do them. And that's a wonderful thing to keep in mind, right? That you don't, just because you've done it this way, don't mean you have to do it this way, right? And so staying in community with younger women and older women um, has been tremendously helpful for me or being in community. In the Army, and when I was 26, I joined the Army, and uh, there were quite a few women in my training or people in training with me who were 17, 18, 19 years old. 26 to 17, is there's a big difference. There's a big difference. And so I've always, as an adult, always had people who are somewhat younger and somewhat older around. Um, and that's been really helpful to me. Um, and so my number one piece of advice is stay in community with younger and older black women. And I'm saying black women in particular because there's no community like a community of black women. When you see a place that is black women only, it is so free, <laughs> so open, so caring, so supportive, so loving in a way that we can't really do when we're in community with others. Um, because when you're in community with everybody, you do have to look, watch your back. You always have to watch your back, right? You always have to look out for and be, on, be prepared for. We, I always have one foot out the door. If I'm in community with everybody, right? If there's men there, if there's white people there, if there's other people who are not white but not black, right? Always I have one foot out the door. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Right. I'm prepared at any minute for those people to take a turn <laughs> and for me to be like, I knew it and go. Right. Whereas when you are in community with black women only, you really can be you. Um, you can let it go, especially a community like the Exodus Summit community. We are a little prop. We're more. Open minded, I think. We're more accepting and loving of people as they are in the Exodus Summit community. I'm not saying that there aren't communities of black women that are very um, unaccepting and judgmental. I think judgmental is the right word. 
uh, I think Christian, a lot of reasons, for a lot of reasons, Christianity and black excellence have created some very judgmental black women, okay? But you can find community with the opposite, with the open black women, right? With the caring and loving and supportive black women. I think that's Exodus Summit. I don't think anybody is surprised to hear me say that, right? That's the Exodus Summit community. Let me give you the link to join the Exodus Summit Facebook group if you're not a part of it already. I think you're missing out if you don't have a community that is just black women in your life. I'm not saying your whole, everyone you should spend time with should be black women. Have community with whomever you choose, but somewhere you should have a time and a place and a space where it's just you and black women. And so I invite you to join the Exodus Summit Facebook community at exodussummit.com slash community, right? We are, yeah, so you're saying truth, right? We are, it, there, I, I'm not here to say that all black women are going to be accepting and loving and supportive, and right? But I'm saying that this community <laughs> is how it was set up and is how it's going to continue to be. So join us in the Exodus Summit Facebook community if you have not already. We have some big stuff coming, so stick around, okay? Stick around. <laughs> We're going to talk about some big Exodus Summit things that are coming in just a few minutes, okay? Yeah, when we're with others, we're othered. Adrian, hi, Adrian. When we're, with, when we're in community with other people, we're always the other. We're never the, it, it fully incorporated or ingrained, okay? As a woman in 48, I think most women my age and older would probably agree with that. Some younger women may still feel, no, that's not true. I say just wait. Okay, <laughs> you agree with us sooner than you think. You're always an other when you're in, when you're in community with other people. Um, I've been places like, as a traveler, this stands out to me. I've been places where I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to Brazil and I'm going to blend in. I did not blend in in Brazil, dear friends, right? They, they, the, bus, the men who were like on the street making money and stuff, they would yell out, I love you, America, when I walked by. I looked just like this. My hair looked just like this. I love you, America, right? They know that I'm not Brazilian. They know I'm American. But you know who didn't ever know, never knew I was American? White Americans. White Americans would be like, oh, right? Let's go on the little day tour on the boat. And I sit down and I say, good morning. Oh, you speak English. <laughs> oh, you're American. Never. They would never, ever, 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 ever guess that I was an American. Wearing an Old Navy t-shirt. I'm wearing clothes from Old Navy, right? I'm, matter of fact, I'm wearing exactly what you're wearing, right? You're going to be an other in those communities. And that's tiring, and it's, um, it's more than tight. It's exhausting. And it's just, um, it forces you, no matter how much we think it doesn't, it forces you to create a different version of you, right? To create a, a you that's going to be more, you know, if, if you're not going to blend in, you're going to try at least to blend in a little bit more, right? And we don't want to live like that. We don't want to live like that. And so... I invite you, I implore you, I'm begging you to find a community in your life that is just black women. No matter what your other communities are, find a place where it's just black women. And again, I think it's Exodus Summit. Okay? Um, and, okay, for the women over 60, that, so that's why I'm saying find a find, stay in community with younger and older women. And I hope younger and older black women right? They'll change things for you. I will say this. Black women in their 20s, <laughs> some of y'all are here. Black women in their 20s are still, I think, on the Black Excellence train. So you may, you know, you take them with a grain of salt. Black women in their 20s are like, oh, I'm 24 and I want to go to college. I want to go to grad school. Is it too late? Am I too old? Oh, jeez. Right. Okay. So bear with them. Okay. <laughs> she does have some good to share, but she's also probably a little more black excellence than you may want in your, in, in your life at this moment. Okay. But 
<laughs> but that is um, p advice number one, stay in community. Anyone have any other tips on how they stay in community with older and younger women? Uh, I really love, love, love hearing from older women, black women in their 60s, 70s, 80s. I mean, they've lost the filter and they'll tell you like it is. And they also make you feel really good about yourself, right? When women, women in general, over, over 60, when they hear that I'm not married and I don't have kids, they're like, good for you. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> right? They're like, yes, stay that way. So I really appreciate hearing from them, the hearing the truth, right? Now that you can look back a little more, we all have a little more perspective every year, right? Now that you have a little more perspective, a few more years, a couple more decades, what big picture, what is the big picture thing that we're missing? Black women will tell you that thing. They will tell you, here's the big picture, live for yourself. That's a thing that I'm learning. I think honestly, I'm probably learning it more from older women than younger women. Prioritize yourself. Live for yourself. Right? It's, this is not a message that comes that I deliver because I created this message. I didn't create the prioritize yourself message. <laughs> Forget your purpose and live your dreams. Right? I didn't create this. I am telling you what women have told me. Older women are like, mm-mm. All of that. I did all of this and all of that. There was no payoff. It wasn't worth it. I sacrificed this and that, and I got nothing in return. Not even a thank you. So I wish I had been more like this. I wish I had focused on me more. I wish I had centered myself in my own life. Right? Younger people call it main character thing, whatever. Be the main character in your life. But they didn't invent that. Okay, it's the older women who told them, who they've seen, make that switch and say, mm -mm, no more. No more being the, the, uh, the support, supporting cast member, okay? <laughs> I'm not here to support. I'm here to live. Mm -hmm. Okay, so stay in community with younger and older women. Hi, Kat. So Kat, I met Kat. Kat's in Costa Rica with her mom and her daughter. Living, okay? Kat, I'm 44, my best friend is over 60. She's a white woman, but we have much in common and have been friends for about eight years. I thought you were gonna talk, you posted something about your mom. Let me look for that one because that's what I wanted to share. My mom is over 65, yes, not retired yet. We have conversations all the time about what life will be like when she retires. Yeah, Kat's mom's, Kat is in Costa Rica with her daughter, her mom is there. Mom is, her mom's going back, but coming back and forth. Live. So it's nice to be in that household with three different generations, right? It's going to be interesting. It's going to be, they, it's not new for them, but it's going to be a nice way to see how three different generations of people approach the world, a new life differently, right? Okay, Anita says, yes, we love the message you're giving. Yeah, okay, thanks, Anita. Yeah. Right. It's not it's not I'm not saying I invented this. Right. What I'm saying is here's what I've been told. Spread the word. Spread the word. <laughs> Spread the word. So first thing for black women over 60 to stop feeling invisible. If you feel invisible in your life, if you feel like you're being pushed away, pushed to the side, stay in community with younger and older black women. Second. OK. Second thing I have to say to black women over 60 is, uh, spoiler alert, you're actually midlife now, okay? You're actually midlife. We need a different term. Because 65 is no longer a senior citizen. If we're going to, if we, once you make it to 65, you have pretty solid odds of making it to 90, right? People get confused by the average life expectancy thing. 70 something as the average life expectancy, that includes everybody who's already died. Okay. <laughs> but you're still here. You're on the high end. Okay. So you should expect to live quite a while longer. So I think that means 60 is midlife now. You certainly look like midlife. You certainly don't look like senior citizens. I'm going to tell you all that. Okay. <laughs> you don't look like this is the end. Okay, this is midlife. And so there's more coming. 
we life is chapters and we can we're really good at recognizing and classifying the previous chapters that we've had in our life right i do it all the time right this is the time that i was as, as when my student years right and then here are the years that i was in the army here are the years that i worked right and did nothing else and then now i'm in the years where i don't work i'm in my my semi-retirement period, right? But we forget that there's going to be another one after this and after that and after that. There's more chapters coming. There are more chapters to this book, right? It's me, Yvette, says my great aunt is 103, still living independently and living her best life. 90, 100 is not what it used to be. I don't have to tell y'all that. Y'all, you know that. You have see that in your own family, in your own communities, you're midlife now. You're 60, you're 65, you're midlife, okay? You should expect to be here for quite a while longer. So if you're in the trap, like Rashida said, her Ms. Dow may or may not have said about some of her neighbors, if you're in the trap of just waiting to die, you got to set yourself out free, set yourself, get yourself out of that trap because you got quite a while to go, right? A lot of life left. And you might as well make it what you want it to be. If you spent years raising family, working jobs, I mean, you might as well prolong this phase where you're done with that. Prolong it. Use it. But midlife. Okay, you're midlife. When I was at the family reunion not, um, just a few, few weeks ago, um, my dad's cousin, they, he wasn't there. But Marquita, my cousin Marquita, had a picture of my dad's cousin, who is, what did she tell me he was? I said it the other day, I forgot now. 96 or 97 and still drives, right? In the picture, he looked like, he looked my dad's age. Don't tell my dad. But he looked 77, 78, still driving, tall man, right? Still driving, right? It's not what it used to be. Okay, so we should expect to be here quite a bit longer. We're midlife. And so we have to live like it. If you're, there's no need to be sitting in that rocking chair sad, thinking about the regrets, because you're only midlife. <laughs> you got time to do the things that you thought were regrets. They were just not yet, right? Were they regrets or were, are they just not yet? I didn't do it yet. I'm going to start today. Start today. Let's do it. Okay, Net Moore says, my dad is 92, had a great cousin that was 103. Yeah, like, I'm so serious. That's going to be no big deal to us. 100, 100 years old is going to be no big deal to us soon. It already is it's less of a big deal than it used to be. You used to get on the news when you turned 100. You used to get on the national news when you turned 100. Now, like, okay, calm down. Everybody's, everybody's grandma is 100. <laughs> okay? So I think at 60... You should be viewing yourself, 60, 65, you should be viewing yourself as midlife. And you should approach this new chapter in your life that way, right? That you got quite a while to go and you want to prepare to enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy this, whatever quite a while is for you. Uh, yeah, I think that the average life expectancy thing has some people confused. <laughs> that includes everyone who died on day one, right? Year one year 21, right? That average includes all of them. But once you make it to 60, I think your odds of 90 are pretty significant. I'm not going to do the math. I don't know how to do the math. <laughs> somebody here knows statistics and can make a video about this. Somebody, make a, somebody who knows statistics, make a video about this. Once you make it to 60, your odds are probably better at hitting 90 than a newborn. Right? Because you've travailed, you've you've made it through that rough terrain. <laughs> right? I think it makes sense in my head. Okay. Business as usual. My aunt who turned 89 in August still drives, Linda lives independently. She outlined all eight of her outlived all of her siblings, including my mom. I think that this is going to be no big deal. My parents had a neighbor who was in, uh, 90, and I, every time they said it, I was like, ain't no way. Ain't no way that lady is 90. There's no way. What are y'all talking about? Or eight. I think when, it, when they bought the house, I don't know. 
But like, I think that's going to be no big deal. Okay. So yes. Okay. So peace advice. Number one, stay in community with younger and older black women. Number two, uh, you're actually midlife reframe some things. You're midlife. You got a while to go. So make sure that what you're doing is what you want to do and that you're loving it. Uh, love it. Love your life. Number three. Okay, here we go. If you're afraid of health care costs in the United States, consider a new country. If health care costs are, and, and the concern, the fear of future health care costs are dictating your actions today, what you do and don't do, where you go and don't go, when you retire and don't retire. If healthcare is driving some of your decisions now, consider a new country, okay? I think maybe, just maybe, by maybe I mean I'm 100% certain, you will find healthcare in another country is better, much cheaper, much more accessible, and you're going to feel comfortable getting health care in another country, right? Once you see enough women do it, you see enough women on YouTube, in the Exodus Summit community, in the Exodus Summit itself, you see enough women talking about it, sharing their experiences, I think you're going to find that living in another country may very well be the answer. Getting your health care needs met in a country that prioritizes health care for people who live there, <laughs> Right. Instead of just for people who can afford it or for people who work. Right. For people who have insurance related to their work. I think that you'll find that. You're, you'll be more comfortable with it than you think. Right. If you can live in a place that has actual basic some sort of health care, universal health care for all people. They're telling you that they value all people. Right. There are countries that have health care for every resident, every person who is there legally, right? Every res resident, every citizen. And residency in another country, Panama. I'm trying to push out of Panama. I don't know why because I've never even, I haven't even been there yet. I won't get there till next month. But Panama, Mexico, Portugal, France. I mean, the list is longer than I have time to go through. But I think you'll find you'll get good health care that has a priority, that, that emphasizes the actual care and the health <laughs> and not the medication only. I'm not anti-medication. I was a pharmacy technician, okay? I'm not anti-medication, right? But there should be a health care system that encompasses more than take this and then take that, right? And I think that's what you'll get in another country, I think. OK, we've ta I've talked to enough women on this channel in the Exodus Summit community, on the Exodus Summit channel, in the Exodus Summit. I've talked to enough women that I feel conf con confident in telling you that if health care is driving your decisions today, instead of letting health care's the lack of care in the U.S. and the expensive care in the U.S. Uh, drive your decisions, pick a new country. Pick a new country. This is not the only one. United States is not the only country, right? Pick a new country. At Exodus Summit 2023, we have a panel on getting healthcare abroad. I think that hearing enough women talk about their experiences will help you. If, you're, if you don't trust my word on this, which I don't blame you, okay? <laughs> I don't blame you. This is important. You want to hear this for more than just me. If you don't trust just my word on this, come to Exodus Summit 2023. And make sure you come to that session on the first day on healthcare abroad. I'm pretty sure that's the first day, okay? Because you're going to hear from women who had a variety of different health situations um, talk about the healthcare that they've received in other countries as residents and as tourists, as visitors, okay? I want you to uh, know that there, there's just a better option. Healthcare is, a, is the kind of situation in the U.S. where people will stay working, stay working because of the their fear that their need for healthcare is going to put them in the poorhouse, right? Uh, but that's not normal. That's not natural. That's not how other countries are run. 
And it's not how other people in their 60s have to think about approaching their 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s and 100s. In other countries, uh, healthcare is more accessible, and especially to those of us who have US dollars, right? Maybe a teach maybe if you're maybe if you're a teacher I don't know the answer to this maybe if you're a teacher in Costa Rica the healthcare is expensive right but for us coming from the US healthcare in Costa Rica is not expensive I got a quote from a dentist I went to a dentist the other day finally in Costa Rica I'm in Houston today but I was in Costa Rica 2 days ago okay I got a quote from a dentist for root canal and crowns I need two root canals two crowns the quote was $850, which I think was per, per, $850 each, $850 per tooth, $1,700. I didn't add it up because I didn't want to. $1,700 total. That's a lot of money, okay? But I don't think it's a lot in the U.S. I went to a bougie dentist, right? They speak English. The dentist's office name is in English, right? Um... It's in a ritzy neighborhood. It's in a ritzy neighborhood. Um, and so that dentist, that was the price at that dentist. I know in Costa Rica, I could get the crown for probably crown and thing. I could get it for five, probably five or 600 as opposed to 850. But I really liked that they spoke English, that I can walk from my Airbnb, right? So I'll share. So what I'm saying is I'll continue to share my experience with that. Um, but I think that you hearing enough women talk about the health care, the continued care that they get uh, in, in other countries will help make you feel a little more at ease. Okay, so Anita says double that per tooth. So double what I was quoted. Okay. I felt like it was a good price. The way the lady said it to me told me that she knew that it was expensive for Costa Rica but she also knew I would pay. You know how you can read people. I read her face. She was like, yes, okay, this is not what you were expecting in Costa Rica, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's still a good price. So um, I'll share my experience with you, but in this summit, we have women coming to share their, oh gosh, oh, Teresa, girl, <laughs> $3,200 for a crown? Girl, girl, you should have, I wish I had known. You should have flown down here. <laughs> Seriously. It's sad that it is more accessible to get your passport, get on a plane, go to a foreign country to get dental care than it is to get it at home. But it's true, right? Just like it was easier for me to quit my job and travel than it was for me to take the vacation days that I had earned on my job. Things in the U.S. are not set up for us individually, right? Things in the U.S. are not set up for people to live good lives. They're set up for us to be workers. And if you want to live a life where you're not a worker only, right? If you want to live a life where you have a full life, girl, I can't get over that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, the, the answer is to go to another country. If you want to live in a place where you're not seen as a worker, where you're seen as a whole person, a person of value, leave the country. I'm so serious about that. Go to a new country. You're just in the wrong country. It's okay, right? It's just, you're just in the wrong country. Find another one, okay? I invite you to come to Exodus Summit and make sure you come to that session. Um, you'll want to hear some more women's stories, you know, stories. Yeah, stories. You'll want to hear some more women's experiences. Uh, I think you hear it enough, you'll feel comfortable getting your care abroad, going abroad, living abroad, getting care abroad, and forming community abroad. Another fear that a lot of women have is, if I sure, I could move abroad, but then I'm going to be on my own, but probably not, right? <laughs> Everywhere you go, there's other people there. <laughs> There's other people there. There's the ability to create community there. So do it. Create community. And even if it's even if it, your community is people you pay to care for you, 
right? People you pay to do your housekeeping, people you pay to do your this and your that. I think that counts. That They all go in the community bucket to me, right? People you pay to, nur- to be your nurse. That's still care, and it's something that maybe you wouldn't be able to do in the U.S., okay? I'm looking at y'all's dental quotes, and I'm like, girl. So this is why I'm, I'm surprised, but also not surprised, because this is why I didn't go to the dentist in Palm Springs. That filling came out, my tooth, the filling came out of my tooth. And then the tooth, part of the tooth broke off. That happened in Palm, before Palm Springs. But I didn't go to the dentist in Palm Springs because I knew. <laughs> I knew it was not going to be cost effective. I was like, I will wait. I'll wait. I know I'm going to Costa Rica. And Costa Rica is not even the cheapest in Latin American country. You know, Costa Rica, as far as Central America goes. Costa Rica is definitely, I think, I think Costa Rica is definitely more expensive than other Central American countries. Uh, but I was like, I will wait, right? I'm not going to a Palm Spring dentist. I'm not, because I knew, I knew it was a crown and I assumed a crown and a root canal. Nope. I knew, I was like, mm, okay. If you can fly to, fly, so first of all, I think we, what we're hearing is that we should be flying to, flying to Mexico, Costa Rica, somewhere else, Colombia, for our dental care. I guess that's what we're learning today. Even if we don't move abroad yet, we should at least be flying for our dental care. <laughs> I think that's the first thing that we're learning today, okay? All right? Okay? I, I don't know. Yeah, all right? When I, go to the, when I went to the dentist... The questions were, why, why, how long has this, how long, when did this tooth break off? Why didn't you get it fixed right away? I'm like, girl, you already know, okay? <laughs> it's not, it's not affordable where I lived. It's not affordable, okay? Um, so we've requested kindly, so Natasha's channel, Natasha is a nurse who has done videos on medical care abroad. Natasha, are you here? Let me see if I can show you, link to her channel. I can't show it to you, but let me see if I can find it in a... So there, we have, we begged and begged, and finally, <laughs> a nurse in our community may created a YouTube channel on, on this topic, on medical tour, hers is medical tourism, not moving abroad for medical care, but on medical tourism, flying in and flying out. Natasha, she's not here. Anybody, can anybody recall, is, her, is the channel her name? Let me see, I think. R A M O N. Am I saying? Am I spelling it wrong? Romantal. Romantal. R A M T A L. Let me try a few different things. Yay! Medical Tourism R N. Her YouTube channel is Medical Tourism R N. I'm gonna drop this link here, and if you're watching the replay, hello, friends in the future. I hope the future is amazing. Welcome. Uh, it's in the description if you're watching the replay. Okay, so she's Medical Tourism RN 812 on YouTube. I don't think she's got a video on. I have not yet seen a dental video on her channel, but maybe we can. (laughs) Oh, nine things black women need to know before going abroad for dental work. Okay, so Natasha's channel, we we can beg her for some interviews maybe with some women (laughs) and some other. I don't know how much time Natasha has. She's an RN. She's an Doctor, a nurse, you know what they're called. They're doc- the nurses who are doctors. <laughs> you would never believe I used to work in a hospital. You know what I'm talking about, okay? And she, doc, she is Dr. Ramental, R-A-M-O-N-T-A-L, but she's an, a nurse, okay? Um, so, okay, yes, okay, that's Natasha's channel. 
Uh, maybe we can beg her, harass her gently into having some more people come on her channel and talk about their experiences in different places and what they paid for things. Because that's the question, right? The question isn't necessarily, am I going to get good care? Because relatively speaking, you're not getting good care in the U.S. anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you just want at least as good as in the U.S., if not better, and for, for a better price. Right? Nurse practitioner. I don't, is she, a, no, she's not a nurse practitioner. She's a nursing PhD. I think she's a nursing PhD. We, I don't know. Okay. And she's not here right now. So whatever I say is made up. Okay. <laughs> I'm just making up what I think is right. I don't think she was a nurse practitioner. I think she's a nurse. I think she has a PhD in nursing. I think because nurse practitioners don't usually use the doctor thing. It's the, the nurses who have the PhD in nursing who use doctor. Okay. Thank you friends for helping me. All right. So, okay. Charlotte. Hi, Char no Celeste. Celeste is saying, hi Celeste is saying Charlotte Van Horn in Panama got a root canal last week for three fifty. Okay. I got quoted eight fifty for the root canal plus the thing. Root canal plus the whatever. I just said it and I've already forgotten. Root canal plus crown in Costa Rica. But Panama, I'm, I'm really trying to push y'all to Panama. It seems great. If you, It seems great. I don't know. I can't wait to get to Panama. I get there next month. I, it seems great. <laughs> I think when I get to Panama, I'm going to say, I wish I had moved. I wish I had gotten residency here in Costa Rica. I think that's what's happening. Okay. Back on track. Back on track. Okay. So black women over 60, what I say to you is if healthcare costs are guiding your decisions or the future healthcare costs or the fear of healthcare costs, if they're guiding your decisions, move abroad, pick a new country, find community there, find healthcare there, live, live without the looming, the looming fear of the future. The looming fear of needing care when you get older. Uh, Exodus Summit 2023 is online and it's October 6th through 9th. And we have a session on healthcare. We are covering. Exodus Summit is a virtual summit or a virtual conference for black women who want to get together a plan to take a career break or a sabbatical or to move abroad or to bop around as a nomad. If you want to do one of these things, you should be attending our Exodus Summit virtual event, October 6th through 9, all online. Tickets are at exodussummit.com, okay? So yes, we have one session on healthcare abroad, but the theme of the summit is location freedom, financial freedom, and time freedom for black women. Location freedom, financial freedom, time freedom for black women. I have location freedom, which is why I'll be spending the entire fall in, Pan in Costa Rica and why I'm able to fly into Houston to see Beyonce for the weekend, right? Location freedom is the ability to be where you want when you want, right? This is something a lot of retirees have. Uh, time freedom means that we don't have a job telling us where to be and when to be there physically or time-wise, all of that, physically and time-wise. Another thing that I have, I get to experience, which is why I say I can give advice to 60-somethings because I've been, <laughs> I've been a semi-60-something for quite a while. <laughs> I've been a 60-something for quite some time now. <laughs> and we put together Exodus Summit so that these things, location freedom, financial freedom, and time freedom can be yours. You don't have to be in your 60s. You can be, okay, as much as I've just made fun of women in their 20s, you can be in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s. You can be in your 70s or 80s. Exodus Summit is a space. It's, it's space and time for you to prioritize the next chapter for you. Work on what that's going to look like. We all have the next, we're all approaching the next chapter. For some of us, it's empty nesting. For some of us, it's filling up the nest. <laughs> For some of us, it's up some, something else. We're all approaching a next chapter. Life is chapters. And so Exodus Summit is a time and a place for you to work on, to prioritize that next chapter. What do I want it to look like? Where do I want to be? What do I want my top like priorities to be? 
What do I want to focus on? Right? It could be nothing. It could be I want to spend some time doing nothing. That's something you have to plan for. You have to have a plan for it. You can't stay in the same life, in the, in the same country, <laughs> with the same job and the same people and do something totally new. I'm sorry, you can't. You have to make a plan for that change. And that change, I just, I don't mean you have to leave the country to be, to be renewed. I don't mean that. But I mean that you need to have a plan because the same job, the same responsibilities are there tapping on your shoulder. And if you don't have a plan, you're going to stick in that same groove in your life. You're just going to be going around that same groove like a needle on a record, right? If you want to, to, to make a change, you need to free up the time and space for you to prioritize those things. That's one of the benefits that Exodus Summit will give you. That's one of the things Exodus Summit will do to you, for you. Gives you the time and the space to get some clarity, okay? Also, Exodus Summit gives you speaker. It brings in speakers who can give you the tools you need to do a new thing. You can try to figure everything out on your own. You can try. You can. You can and you could succeed in figuring things out on your own. Okay? It's going to take you longer. It's going to be more stressful. You're going to get more easily distracted and put off track and discouraged. Right? So why not go to a place where there is help, there is support, there's information. Our speakers are coming in to give you the tools you need. So why not come? All right. We announced a few sessions that are pretty new uh, lately. There's some sessions that we hadn't been able to announce before. So I'm going to go ahead and go to ExodusSummit.com like I'm telling you to. And we're going to look at some of the sessions that I think on this here channel I haven't been able to announce before. Uh, the schedule is up. You're going to hear my voice in just a second. Let me stop that recording. I'm trying to scroll fast enough to stop the recording. Oh, it didn't autoplay. I must have stopped it before. Um, I'm gonna, I want to show you some of the sessions that are coming at ExodusSummit.com. Okay, let's see. Okay, uh, some of the sessions that we haven't been able to talk about because, you know, things, it takes a while to get some things formula, formalized and to get some things on the calendar. So actually, let me go up to the schedule. Schedule is set. All right, so we've talked about this session with Octavia Rahim, Embodying Rest, a Deeper Restorative Practice. This is the first session of the summit, and it happens Friday night. Octavia Rahim is the author of Pause, Rest, Be, and she's the founder of Devoted to Rest. Her business, Devoted to Rest, is a, um, uh, she goes and she teaches people how to create a rest practice, individuals and businesses, right? And, you know. And so that's the first session, and this is for everyone. She's doing a second session about a month later for All Access Pass holders. So whether you buy the Weekend Pass or the All Access Pass, you have access to the first session. Octavia Rahim asked, me, asked Rashida and me to tell you some things. Before you come to this session, what you need to know is you need a pillow, you need a journal, you need to be wearing comfortable clothing, uh, she may, she's going to send us a playlist. She wants us to have some music. We may do some listening of some music together, or maybe you'll just play it while the whole time. Um, she wants you to be in a space that is comfortable. If this is a session, if you're like on the East Coast and this session starts at 7 p.m. Eastern time, if you want to lay down and you want this to lead you into your nighttime sleep, go ahead and do this in the bed with nobody else around. If you're on the West Coast, right, this is gonna start at 4 p.m. Eastern time, maybe you're gonna do some stuff after the session. Just make sure you're in a space that is quiet, in a space where you can be alone and you can be only focused on this and yourself. All right, um, we have, okay, so I told you about this, the healthcare uh, panel, we also have a panel, talk on international travel. This is a pretty new session that we haven't announced yet formally. Well, we just did, but we ha I hadn't on this channel. Uh, panic and poor planning, financial mistakes that new expats, that send new expats packing. Things that people do when they move abroad that mean they got to move back, 
right? Uh, Kristen Ivey, who is a Marie Kondo certified decluttering expert, is doing a session with us on decluttering to create space for a more fulfilling life. Uh, Dr. Marielle Bouquet, who is a licensed clinical therapist, has a session on leaving behind what you've outgrown. All right. And uh, let's see. We're over 65. Some of y'all, some of y'all may want a remote job. I don't know. Okay, Libria's session on how to use AI to supercharge your remote job quest may or may not be interested in to you. It's okay, right? It's okay if you're not into that. Uh, Tori, who might be here this morning, good morning, Tori, has a session on getting someone else to do it. Let's delegate things so that we can have some time freedom in our households, in our families, in our lives. Let's get somebody else to do it, okay? <laughs> All right. We want to make sure that this summit gives you the tools you need to do what you want to do. Uh, Jamila Souffrant, who is Journey to Launch. Some of you already follow Jamila. Uh, her session is on calculating your financial independence number and getting there, how to calculate the number and how to get there. If the idea of financial independence seems out of reach because Susie Orman said you need $20 million to retire, this is the session for you because Jamila is going to show you the way to calculate a number that's right for you and how to get there. And then we have a session on generations moving abroad. We have uh, a panel, some women who have taken, uh, who have gone abroad with generations of their family, with older people, with younger people, so that you can see how, um, just like I talked about Kat, Kat and her mom and her daughter are in Costa Rica. So you can see how possible this is, whether you are a person who would take a younger or older or both, You'll see how, how possible it is and how it's not, um, it's not, um, it's not like, oh, I can't do it. I have kids, so I can't do it. I have parents, so I can't do it. How the answer may be, we all go. Whether we all go all the time or we all go and some of us come and go back and forth, right? We all go. Okay. So Exodus Summit tickets are at ExodusSummit.com, and it's all online, October 6 through 9, okay? I hope that we'll see you there. All right, so we talked about the first three pieces of advice. I think we got through three for black women over 60 that I have. Stay in community with younger and older black women. You're actually midlife, okay? Uh, number three, health care. If health care is causing you stress, consider a new country. Number four, you don't have to go alone. Whatever your new chapter is, if your new chapter is moving abroad, if your new chapter is staying where you are but doing things a different way, you don't have to do it alone. You can form community with people who are just as into it as you are. Sometimes we think we have to do things alone because nobody in our life today wants to do that thing. But that doesn't mean nobody wants to do it. It just means your immediate circle doesn't want to do it. And you just got to expand your circle a little bit. That is the thing that Exodus Summit is wonderful for. If you buy the All Access Pass to Exodus Summit 2023, you'll get to go to some small group breakout rooms where women who are interested in the thing that you're interested in will be gathered together. I have labeled one of the rooms Golden Girls. Uh, I hope that's explanatory. If you're looking for, self-explanatory, if you're looking for some people to golden girl with, come to one of these breakout rooms so that you can meet them. Meet some people who are interested in sharing residence somewhere, right? Sharing a home somewhere, or maybe traveling around somewhere together. If the room, if the golden girl room is for people who are looking for potential home sharing, what would we call a room for people who are looking to bop around together? We have some slow travel rooms because that was a special request. So we already have rooms set up for slow travel. Y'all know. Okay, I can't stand looking at <laughs> some things. Okay, y'all know I'm vain. It's already been documented. Uh, but I don't know what to call a room for people who are looking for people to travel with, travel buddies. Maybe we'll just call it travel buddies. So... These are things that Exodus Summit does really well. Connecting people, connecting black women, 
with other black women who are into their thing. All right. Uh, okay. Bridget says, I'm excited about the summit. I'm 64 years young. I'm ready to exit the U.S. havoc and I'm eager to learn how to finance my dream life. Good. I'm dreaming again. That's huge. That is huge. That is huge. Dream again. Dream a new dream. Sometimes we're, we're, oh, no, Thelma and Louise did not end well, Adrian. <laughs> I like the idea, but I don't think so. <laughs> I like the idea, except that it didn't end well for Thelma or Louise. <laughs> But we'll find a nice room. We'll find a title for that room. We have a room or two. I think we have a couple rooms set up for slow travel. So we'll have some rooms set up for um, for bopping, right? So for uh, we have some, we have a room for cruising. Uh, that was a special request. Uh, if you have your all access pass and you want to be like the room monitor, right? If you just want to be the person who makes sure that uh, there's nothing going left in that room, you can email. Hello at ExodusSummit.com and say you'll, you're volunteering to be a room. I forgot what we're calling them. Just put something in the title, in the subject line of your email that says something about breakout rooms or salons. We're calling them salons. I even forgot what we're calling them. We're calling them salons. If you want to host a salon, right, you just want to be the person in the room to make sure everything is going smoothly. Go ahead and uh, email hello at ExodusSummit.com and offer and tell us what, which salon you would want to be the, the host, hostess of. Uh, and if it's not one that I've named, just tell us what, make one up, right? Like seriously, I, right? You're like, I don't want to do this. I want to do, I would like a salon on that and I'm willing to host it. I mean, you can make up your own if you have your all access pass. Magnolias, platinum magnolias. All right, so we are talking to black women over 60. Okay, so what? No, but I'm still on number four. You don't have to go alone. I don't know if I have anything else to say about that, though. <laughs> I think I covered it. Just because the people in your life today don't want to do it doesn't mean nobody wants to do it. Oh, we do need a snowboarding salon, Stephanie. Let me write that down. I don't have that. We, I haven't made that. We do need a snowboarding salon. And if so if anybody wants to be the host of that salon, email I'm writing that down. Snowbirding is spending the winter, going south for the winter, basically. Snowbirding is leaving the country for X number of months out of the year and then going back, right? Snowbirds usually keep their home, but they leave and come back, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, we need a little chaperone or monitor just to make sure nobody's in there like, are you prepared for Jehovah's return? <laughs> right? <laughs> We want to make sure that they stay on topic, uh, that there's no men in, the, in there being the boss of people, right? We just want to make sure there's black women in there having a good time talking about the thing that the salon is supposed to be about. The usher. <laughs> yeah. If you're volunteering as usher, go ahead and email hello at exodussummit.com and put something about breakout room or salon in the um, subject line of the video. Okay, Exeter Summit is a great place to meet the people who are going to be your travel companions. I mean that. I mean that, right? Every time there's a get-together, after the get-together ends, we get some kind of update of some people who are still together, right? I'm like, this get-together is over. And y'all are like, no, it's not. We're still together, okay? <laughs> we're still together. We you thought the get-together ended, but we're still getting together. Uh, these things happen when you get a group of women together who have something in common, right? Like-minded, who are into, into this thing. When you get us together, uh, some of y'all are going to want to stay together. And the Exodus Summit this year has a place for y'all to meet each other and form, whether it's in-person connections or for, form accountability partners. Accountability partners who have met during Exodus Summit from, the, from 2020 are still meeting. Right. Uh, and so are still getting still together, still friends, still connected. So it's, there's no reason to, to think it's not going to happen again this year. It's going to happen this year. This is our fourth year for Exodus Summit. And every year women have bonded and formed connections, formed friendships, formed chosen sisterhoods. Uh, so it's going to keep happening. We know that. Right. So come 
come and join us. <laughs> the weekend pass does not include the salons because uh, we're doing this on Zoom. And, you know, Zoom is funny about not funny, expensive. OK, I'm going to tell the truth. Zoom is too expensive. When you have like more than a thousand people in a breakout room, in breakout rooms, and you know, so this is only for all access pass holders. If you have the weekend pass and you want to upgrade to the all access pass, look for an email in your inbox that says how to upgrade. Okay, I'm actually supposed to, I was supposed to send another one yesterday, but I forgot to do it. So I'll send another one today for those of you who missed that email or deleted it or whatever on how to upgrade if you want to upgrade. But no. So the weekend pass holders will be in a party. So don't don't despair. While the salons are happening, the weekend pass holders will be in a virtual party. OK, it's going to be a party, uh, but you're not going to be able to talk and meet people like you would in the salons. It's worth it. Seriously, it's worth upgrading if you know that you want to meet some women. Right. If you wanted to if you would want to go to a virtual meetup with a small group of women who have something in common and talk about that thing and meet each other and get to know each other. It's worth the upgrade. It's worth it. On top of that, the All Access Pass gets one full year of replays for Exodus Summit 2023, whereas the Weekend Pass gets one month of replays. And the All Access Pass holder uh, also gets access to our keynote speakers. Okay, so I scrolled through some sessions, but I didn't highlight the keynote speakers this time. My mistake. Keynote speakers are Tabitha Brown, um, Rachel Cargill and Dr. Joy Harden Bradford, plus that second session from Octavia Rahim in about a month, right? Those are things that you get with the all access pass that you don't get with the weekend pass. Okay. So if you want to, so X, 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 you crossed out your name. Are there Christian groups? If you want that group and you want to be the host of that group, email hello at exodussummit.com. I haven't had, this is the first request I've had for that. If you want a Christian group, Go ahead and, and, and you're willing to host it and you have an all access pass, uh, email us, okay? We can make the group. You tell us, right? This is not me telling you how you need to be divided. <laughs> this is me telling you, you tell us who you want to meet in this summit, right? And if you're willing to host that room, right, just be in the room and make sure everything is fine. That's it, right? Tattletale. I called it the tattletale the other day. Rashida and I went live on a day. It must have been Wednesday or Thursday. And I was like, yes, if you want to be the room tattletale, if you want to be the room tattletale who's just there in case something goes bad to report back, uh, if we need to go in there and shut some stuff down, that's fine. Just email us, hello at exodussummit.com and put, no, I'm not 60. <laughs> I, I, I would say that I'm 60 to get some compliments, but I'm not. I'm 49. Uh, hello at exodussummit.com and uh, put something about breakout room or salon host, salon host or breakout room host in the subject line of the email. And we can set that up. Do I need to, is that real Rashida or is that Rashida being Rashida? Is there a real person who needs to go? Oh, AJ. What does it say? What is it a picture of? Let me see what it is. I don't know what that is. I'll ban them. Ban. Done. I don't know what the point was. You know me. I'm like, what is it? <laughs> Somebody tell me. <laughs> Somebody tell me what it is. Um, okay, so I, I got to get moving. Okay, this, the next point is you don't have to do it alone. Okay, number four. Number five is, but you can go alone. Number five is you can go alone because you will meet people on the journey. Okay, whether it's an Exodus Summit meetup or moving abroad or taking a career break or sabbatical, you can do it alone. You can do it alone because you're going to meet people on the way. Four and five are very similar points. Just because the people in your life today aren't into this new thing doesn't mean nobody's into it. And it doesn't mean you're not going to meet people. The Lake Chapala community, Lake Chapala, Mexico has a community of black women from the U.S. and Canada mostly. Maybe U.K., U.S., U.K., Canada, and maybe Caribbean, right? Uh, and they just had a get together. And I was like, wow, that group has like 10x in size. When I was there, there was maybe 30. No, 
When I was there, there was maybe like seven or eight black women. It didn't 10X, but it, at least 5X. There was at least 30 or 40 black women in the, at the meetup. They just had one, right? I'm like, gosh, what is, this, is ha- this is happening. You, and and I'm, I'm bringing them up in particular because they do things in a really community-focused way. They get together. This is not an Exodus Summit community, but some of the women in Exodus Summit are in that community, okay? But they're really focused on caring for each other. Joan Hardy was a really strong member in that community. Uh, she left and moved to Portugal. Hi, Joan. Uh, and they're still going strong, right? They didn't collapse. Uh, Joan had set up like an emergency contact situation. If so if you need help, you know, you need to, or, you know, like an emergency check-in situation to keep an eye on people. And they took that and ran with it and are doing really community focused things. I don't really know if you if we get the idea of community, those of us who've lived in the United States and are black women who are told to do everything yourself. We don't get what community care can really be. Uh, I read that quote again this this week. Uh, the woman said, screaming self-care to people who need community care is abusive, <laughs> right? So when you scream out self-care, self-care, when well, what we really need is community care, you are doing these people dirty. What you need, maybe. So yes to self-care. I believe quitting your job is self-care. Yes to self-care. But what we also need is community care. And some of these communities, these pockets of black women around the world are doing it so well. And in a, well, in a way that I can't explain. When I talk about what I want for me and my future family, people are like, that doesn't even exist. What are you talking about? I'm like, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Black women are doing it really well. We talked to um, the global black girl, Marina, on this channel not too long ago, and she talked about the enclave of black women in Costa Rica. I haven't plugged into them yet. Uh, but yeah, there are women who are doing it really well, raising their children in community with one another. So even though you might be the only parent, you're not the only person parenting. It's real, okay? I'm telling you, I've seen it with my eyes. Lake Japala is doing a really good job there. They used to be, when I was there, the women in Lake Japala were seniors. No, the, no, Lake Japala is full of seniors. The black women were a little younger. But now even the women who are moving there are even younger than that. So there are generations of black women there caring and in community with one another, caring for and in community with one another. Uh, I love to see it. And so number four and number five are the same point. You don't have to go alone, but you can go alone because somebody somewhere is going to become, is, you can get in community with people and be, get the care that you're afraid you're going to be missing if you leave the country. Community care. Uh, that woman, I followed her on Instagram. She's not, she's just a lady. <laughs> I mean, you know, like she's not a writer or anything, but I'm like, I mean, she just laid it on the line. <laughs> I don't, there's nothing that I could say that could improve on those words. Stop screaming self-care at people who need community care. Okay. Yes. Hey, Roshni. Yes. Right. And so... Um, you can, you may not have community care where you live because black women are told to do it alone and we are left alone to do it alone and expected to do it alone. But you can create the community you need. It might be easier in another country. It might be easier, just like health care, community care might be much more accessible to you if you're in another country. It's not that these things don't exist. It's that you're in the wrong country. I love it. I love to see it. So the Lake Chapala ladies just got together and how to get together, right? They're doing it. Um, but they're not the only community out here living and thriving in community with each other. Okay? All right, number six point is house sit. Okay, so what I say to black women, so you over 60, 
so you don't feel invisible? So you live your life and thrive at this midpoint? <laughs> You're at the midway point in your life. How sit? How sit for free accommodation and see the world. If you like any kind of animal, if you like dogs or cats or birds or fish or chickens or doll, uh, what do they call horses, turtles, you can be a pet sitter and a house sitter. You can get free accommodation around the world and uh, live out your jet setting dream. I recommend it. This is how I've lived as a 60 year old starting from 40. I think I started house sitting at 43. Okay. Starting from 43, I became a 60 year old at 43. <laughs> I became a 65 year old at 43 because of house sitting. I got to live like a retiree because of house sitting. Because of house sitting, I had, uh, I did not have to pay for my place to stay. And I've had blocks of time. I've had a full year where I house sat back to back to back to back for a full year, right? Did not pay for accommodation. I recommend house sitting to you. I'm teaching house sitting at Exodus Summit, Exodus Summit 2023. So get your ticket at exodussummit.com. I've got a whole bunch of videos on this channel about house sitting. Yes, you can do it if you're a senior citizen. In fact, most house sitters are seniors, especially in the United States because they're the only ones with the free time and the location freedom. House in the U.S., you seniors are the only ones with location freedom and time freedom. So most house sitters in the United States are senior citizens. Okay? So yes, it's for you. If you're a senior, it's for you if you're not a senior. It's for you if you're retired. It's for you if you still work. You can house sit locally. You can house sit far if you want. If your job will, doesn't care where you are in the country, psh, Use house sitting to get free accommodation. Thank you. Right? I, um, I get, my life was changed, transformed once I understood that I didn't have to pay for a place to stay. House sitting means I, don't, I didn't have to go back to a tradi traditional job. House sitting gave me the space, the bandwidth to dream. To dream up this YouTube, uh, the YouTube channel was already in works. The idea, no, the idea for the channel was in, the, in my mind before house sitting. But house sitting gave me time and space to make it, to do it, <laughs> to actually make the videos and to work a whole lot less and to see the world and to have company while I do it. Pet sitting in a, in a strange place is really nice. It's really nice to, even if you're going to go out and sightsee, come in the back to the house and have a little tail wagon. Like, oh, I'm so glad you're back. It's really a nice thing. Uh, I recommend house sitting, whether you're over 60 or under 60. I recommend it. If you are a friend to animals, you don't have to like all animals, but I think it's better if you do like some animal. Okay? <laughs> there are house sits that aren't pet sits, but hard. It's harder. They're harder and in demand. And okay. It's probably better if you just pay for a place to stay. Seriously. But house sitting changed the game for me and for a lot of women right here. So there are people who house it with children. Mama motivates. Okay. Somebody raise your hand if you house it with kids. Uh, I need to interview somebody, some women who house it with kids. I keep forgetting to put that on my list. Because I forget that people don't know. A house sit is staying in a house while people are gone. Some people don't care if it's you and your kids. Some people don't care if it's you and your dog. Some people don't care if it's you and your spouse or your mom or your best friend. Some people do care. People, you know, just like in your life, some people are whatever. They're like, whatever. I don't care. And some people are like, no. This, but not that. This is okay, but not that, right? House sitting is staying in a, in a home. Some of these homes have children anyway. <laughs> and when they leave, that child's room is empty. And they don't care if you and your kid come. Or some are, are actually pretty happy if you and your kid come, right? I, I, you never hear me say you can't house sit with kids. You can house sit with kids. I Somebody in the Facebook group house sat with two kids under six. And I was like, wow, those house, those clients were trusting. <laughs> those clients were very trusting. They were small kids. 
I'm teaching a session on house sitting at Exodus Summit 2023 because it changed everything. I don't have to have a job because I don't have to pay for a place to stay. And that's because of house sitting and my mom and dad. Hi, mom and dad. <laughs> but house sitting, so serious, so serious. I had a full year, a full calendar, not calendar. I think it was like April to April. Yeah, it was April to April. Because April to April, because my because my dad had a heart attack at the end, right? The end of the year. <laughs> it's not funny, but that's how I remember. It was April to April. I had a full calendar year where I house sat and did not pay for a place to stay. Back to back to back to back. I went from the U.S. to Mexico, back to, I went from the East Coast, I think I started in D.C., to Mexico, a couple different places in Mexico, I came up to San Francisco, I went to London, I went to Amsterdam, came back, I think I even went to Austin, I think I went to Austin before San Francisco, right? I did a full year of house sitting. I didn't pay for a place to stay. Changed everything. Okay. <laughs> House sitting a turtle. I want to house sit a hedgehog. You know, people have little tiny hedgehogs and they're so cute and they're little, little spiky hedgehogs. Uh, I applied for one in um, London, but she's, she, she didn't pick me. Uh, yeah, whatever it is. Uh, rabbits, right? I don't do rabbit sits because I'm not into, I'm afraid of rabbits. Okay. I don't do rabbit sits, but one, you, you don't even need to like all animals. Really, you just like to need to like a type of animal. Which am I, I see people reacting to Miss Dow, but I don't see what she said. What did she say? <laughs> uh, you don't even like need to like all animals. I am a friend to animals. I like cats and dogs and chickens. That's about it. Cats, dogs, and chickens. That's my thing. That's who I house sit. Yes, indeed. Yes, I think you sh you did it right. Yeah, y'all did it. Oh, I, I, okay. This is Rashida's mom. Herman Dow and Rashida Dow did a house sit together in the UK. Rashida found out that eh, eh, wasn't necessarily her thing. Herman Dow loves it. And house this was not Ms. Ms. Dow's first house sit. This was her. She's, had, she's done several house sits, right? Yes, you can do that. They have two, they got two bedrooms. They're not going to be there. You ask them, right? You, you, these are people. You house it for people. You have conversations with them. You ask them questions. They answer your questions. They ask you questions. And then they confirm that you're going to be their house sitter. Whatever your situation is, you ask, right? You ask them. Some people will be a yes. Some people will be a no. I house it through trusted house sitters, but there are others. House carers, mind my house. And then there are house sitting companies individual like country specific like there's a house sit in mexico i'm sure there's a house sit in spain whatever i just use trusted house sitters because anytime i want to go somewhere i can get get booked <clears throat> i've never had to work out i've never had to join a second platform but i use trusted house sitters i'll link in the description to my my affiliate link if you want to join trusted house sitters using my link i'll put that in the description of this video when, once we're done shauna so shauna has been to Morocco and Mexico and Puerto Rico, I think, that I know of on house sits, right? While working, I think. I think you still work, right? I don't think you've given that up yet. I hope you do sometime soon. But I think Shauna works on the internet, right? Life changing. Uh, you clean up after yourself. You show up to a clean house and you leave a clean house. Um, do they request the things like take care of the house or do the whole house clean up? Or maybe you clean up, you leave the house the way you found it. You clean the house the way you found it. Yeah, you leave, leave it like you found it, just like you would expect. There's no, there's no trick. I know people think that there's some sort of trick to it. There's no trick. All right. These are people who are leaving their house and they want their pets to be happy at home. <laughs> And not boarded in a kennel barking all day. Right? So you get free accommodation to be able to house sit for people and stay in their homes while they're gone. Over 70 is fine. Most house sitters in the U.S. are over 70. 
Mm -hmm. Most house sitters in the U.S. are senior citizens. Because, like I said, in the U.S., they're the only ones with the time freedom and the location freedom to do it, for the most part. All right, so come to Exodus Summit 2023, okay? I'm going to get you started house sitting, okay? If you're a friend to animals, some sort of animal. If you're a friend to animals, this is for you. Again, if you're looking for house sits that are not pet sits, I mean, they exist, but I, don't, I wouldn't join trusted house sitters to not pet sit, right? I would find a house sit somewhere else on my own somehow. Uh, I, how, trusted house sitters is for pet sitters, even though some people here have done sits through them that are not pet sits. You know what I'm saying? You get yourself there, you pay for your own transportation. What you're getting is free accommodation. You're getting the free place to stay. Okay, so my advice to black women over 60, stay in community with younger and older black women. Uh, you're actually midlife, remember that. <laughs> if you're afraid of healthcare costs, consider a new country. <clears throat> you don't have to go alone, but you can go alone. House sit, you're welcome. If you're feeling invisible anywhere, house sitting is a place where you can feel visible because they love seniors. House sitting clients love a senior woman. May, okay, so I've just said midlife and now I'm calling us seniors, but midlife, they love us, okay? When, as a person, an honorary 60 something, okay? As an honorary 60 something, they love us. Number seven, okay, so this is important to me. This is a selfish request. My selfish, from the light is left. Let's see if I can get some more light in here. My selfish request to black women over 60 is please tell your friends and younger people and older people what you enjoy about being over 60. I've talked a lot about not wanting to look older and the inside there, if you open up my head, what that is is a fear of be getting older. And that fear is partially the fault of society, which values youth over age, right? Uh, but part of that fear is also like women, hearing women talk about being older in such negative terms, right? All sometimes when I get together with older women, sometimes all y'all want to talk about is your ailments and your medications, and that's scary, okay? Tell me some good shit, please. Tell me some good. I need to hear the good stuff. Tell me what you like about it, right? I've noticed that y'all seem to feel free to express yourselves. Say that. Tell me how much you love being a woman over 60 for whatever the reasons are. I need you, okay? I need you. Because really, seriously, y'all... Do a lot of talking about the bad stuff. Share the good too. Share it with me. Okay? I was at the family reunion the other week. Here go Connie Perry and another cousin. We were talking. We just having a re standing outside in the parking lot, having a regular conversation. Here you go. Well, my knee and my hip and my... I had to turn around and walk away. Right? <laughs> Stop. Stop. Every time y'all get together... It becomes a comp competition of ailments. What's my, what's your blood pressure? <laughs> Stop. Tell me the good stuff. What do you like about it? Please share with me. <laughs> Please, I need to hear the good. Okay, I'm scared. There is fear in here. There is fear of being older. And y'all are not helping me. <laughs> y'all are not helping. When we got together on the video a few months ago where y'all, this might have been January now, it was January, uh, where black women came on to the, the channel and shared some advice, y'all were glowing and smiling and laughing and giggling. So there's good there. Right. I had some, I think maybe seven or eight different women over 60 plus Angela, who was not 60 yet. I think Angela and Crystal, I think were like 59, 58. Uh, Y'all came on to the channel and told and were talk, gave me some advice. And you were looking good. So there's something good there. Right. There's some good <laughs> in over 60 life. Share that, please, okay? I know about the physical ailments already, right? I'm starting to feel in myself. My knees, well, I haven't had, I don't, you know, I'm knock-kneed, and I was a knock-kneed runner. So my knees are just not 
on my side anymore. Okay, my knees are not on my side anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't need a rundown of the bad only. So, okay, so it is nice to know that some things are going to happen. Like I, I was aware be, before it started happening to me, I was aware that there were some foods that I was going to have to start cutting out because they were going to start turning on me, right? I was aware of that because women had, had been sharing some things, right? But so it is nice to be aware to expect some of the bad or, ne you know, make the, the stuff. But please share the good. Tell me. OK, tell me. Anita says, girl, we have freedom that you cannot imagine. Baby, <laughs> it's a great life. No inhibitions. <laughs> it might embarrass our kids, but we're having fun. I've seen the no inhibitions. Yes, I've seen y'all. I see that in y'all. <laughs> I see y'all out here living without concern for what it looks like to other people. Whether it's, I'm going to dance when the music starts, I'm dancing, or whatever, or something even bigger, like something as small as that or as big as, oh, yeah, my kids don't want me to move, but I moved, right? Uh, I've seen the, I've seen that. <laughs> my mom, one time we were having, I was talking, some, some family was together. My mom said something that didn't sound like her. And I was, everybody was like, Connie. And I said, oh, she must be tired. And she said, no, I'm over 60. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now anytime we get together, anytime there's like a group of women over 60, a woman over 60 will do, will say what she has to say. When other women are like, oh, I'm not going to say anything, a woman over 60 will unmute her microphone. And I'll be like, I'm over 60 and I got something to say. I've seen that. I've seen that in y'all. Yeah. So thank you. Share the good. I need to hear the good. Okay. I Listen, I'm fighting the gray hair. I don't know. Do I want to dye, keep dyeing my hair? Do I want to not keep dyeing it? I've come, come to the compromise where I dyed except for the hair. I dye the gray hair except for at my temples. Uh, I'm struggling with aging, okay? I'm, I've told you this out loud. I'm struggling with it. I don't want to look older, but I want to get older. And that doesn't seem fair. That doesn't seem right. I should be fine with looking older. I'm just not. Uh, part of it is when I, I don't feel older, but I when I look in the mirror, I, that's when I look that's when I see it, right? Moving throughout my day, except for my knees and my ankle makes noise, every, right? Except for the things. <laughs> for the most part, I don't feel at 49 any different than I felt at 32, okay? I'm the same person. Uh, but when I see in the mirror the gray hair and the lines and the this and the that, it's a little bit of a shock to me. I think I need to make peace with it and I think I need y'all's help to do it. Okay, so share the good stuff. Share the good stuff. I need to hear it. I'm telling you, I'm begging you. This is, self, this is a selfish request on here, okay? Some of the other stuff was for y'all, but this was for me. Iris Jessup says, over 60 here, you have time to figure out what the needs are of your body that we live in. Work on giving the body what it needs to thrive. Naps are also my friend. Okay? Iris is telling us, you have the time. It's at over 60, you have the time to care for your body in a way that maybe you didn't have before. Thank you, Iris. Yeah. I want to look forward to it more than I am afraid. <laughs> right? I don't need to get rid of the fear entirely. You know, I believe in keeping the fear with you. Keep it with you, right? Just bring it. Just bring it. Kenya Rancy taught me that, right? Just put it in the passenger seat. It doesn't drive. Fear doesn't drive, but you can take it with you, right? You don't need to get rid of it. I don't need to get rid of the fear, but I do need to, to I need to shrink it. And I shrink that by hearing what you love. What do you love about it? Valerie, I'm 67 in excellent health, still fly. <laughs> yes, love fashion and makeup and traveling, still feel sexy and flirt when I feel like it, love to dance. Tell me what you love, right? Thank you, Valerie. Tell me what you love about it, okay? 
<laughs> freedom. I got to, I, I, one day I'll be set free from it. Like just yesterday I was like, well, if I do my hair, seriously, I'm, I'm not going to do my hair because I'm in Houston and it's really humid. I'm going to look like this for Beyonce, okay? But I had thought for a while about doing my hair. And when I parted it, I was like, oh, there's too much gray in there. I don't want to do it, right? What's the point of doing my hair? I didn't dye it, you know. Uh, I need y'all to help me. Right? There's no point. So here's what I do know at 49. In, as, as an honorary 60-something, here's what I do know. The energy that it takes to pretend <laughs> is exhausting. Pretending is exhausting. Whatever that pretending is, pretending like you're not afraid when you really are, or pretending like you're somebody that you're not, pretending that you're okay with things that you're not okay with, that is exhausting. Just be it. If you're afraid, be afraid. Say, I'm afraid. If you're nervous, say, I'm nervous. If you're not okay with something, say, I'm not okay with it. The energy of pretending is exhausting. And it, will, it takes away from anything else, everything else that you could be doing <laughs> by pretending. Right? So me trying to pretend like I'm not afraid of aging is, would be exhausting. I'm going to tell you. I'm telling you. Okay? Y'all going to help me. <laughs> Y'all going to help me. Okay, so, well, yes, but still, V. Wiggins says gray hair doesn't mean you're aging. Some people turn gray prematurely. So I've had some gray hair since I was around 17, I think. But still, when I look, it's all, 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 it all goes together to me. When I look in the mirror, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I just want to go back 10 more years of looks. I don't want to go back to my 30s. As y'all know, as is clearly documented, I was miserable in my 30s, okay? I have really, really come on in my 40s. I have really turned, turned the corner. I don't want to go back in the number. But I would like to look 30-something again. It's a struggle, okay? It's a real thing. This is a real life, real life thing, okay? And the gray hair is one of the first indicators when I look in the mirror. I'm not in my 30s. <laughs> I'm just barely hanging on to the 40s. <laughs> All right. Okay. I told y'all because I only have a few more minutes now and we're on number eight. Okay. So number one, stay in community with younger and older black women. Number two, you're actually midlife. Number three, if you're afraid of healthcare costs, consider a new country. Number four, you don't have to go alone, number five, but you can go alone. Number six, house sit. You're welcome there. Number seven, tell your friends what you enjoy about being over 60. Number eight, you'll feel less invisible in Latin America. I feel like this whole video is just aimed to push y'all to move to Latin America, to move to Panama, but I promise that was not the... <laughs> That was not the aim of this video. I haven't even been to Panama yet. I go to Panama. There's an Exodus Summit meetup in Panama City, Panama, October 15th. If you're in the Exodus Summit Facebook community and you want to fly down to Panama for the weekend, I say you do it or longer. Or if you already live near Panama, in or near Panama City, Panama, um, I say do it. Panama, you're going to want to scout it out. Uh, I, it seems to me like a wonderful place for black women. And I'm about to find out for myself. Um, but Latin America and other places, not, okay, so Latin America and Asia and parts of Africa, at least, if not all of Africa, uh, has a respect and reverence for, for women. So I'm going back and forth between our 60s midlife or our 60s seniors, whatever we are, 60s as an honorary 60 something, whatever we are. Latin America likes that, right? And has a reverence and a respect for that um, that you won't find in the United States in most places, right? If you're feeling invisible, if you're feeling like people just don't want to even acknowledge you're there, if you're feeling like people are trying to shut you off, right, somewhere, you're not going to feel like that in Latin America. 
because Connie and, and and other places, Connie Perry was the center of attention in Morocco. OK, <laughs> that's not Latin America. That's North Africa. Connie Perry was the center of attention in Latin America. Uh, Rashida and I travel with our moms who are in their 70s and they're always the stars of the show. Wherever we go, <laughs> wherever we go, they get good treatment. Now, Latin America is not um, as not all of Latin America is as physically accessible, right? Lots of cobblestone, lots of steps, Portugal, lots of hills, right? So these places, yes, they treat in daily interactions, they treat older women better. Uh, but there are some things you need to know. You need to, try to go visit some places and scout some places out and see if it's physically going to work for you. But in terms of people treating you better, in terms of you being a respected member of society, a person who is treated with respect and, and given a little, even some extra attention, you're going to find that in a lot of the world, like you won't find it in the United States, okay? But what you won't find a lot of the world, like you do find in the United States, is we have the Americans with Disabilities Act that gives some good accommodation for physical challenges, physical differences. Uh, Rashida and I were looking at places in South Africa for our meet and greet, and there are places that have an amazing view, right? But they're upstairs, up multiple flights of stairs with no elevator, right? Uh, I'm only 49 and I don't want to do it. So I know, right? So there are places that are going, South Africa is going to treat you amazingly well as a woman over 60. Uh, but you'll need to be prepared for some challenging navigating, maybe for it to, for it to be a little more challenging to navigate things physically. If you have some sort of physical thing, something that is in the way, right? Maybe. Okay. Okay. How did we do? Oh, look at this. Rainbow Hughes. I learned how to sail a boat at 63. From a little woman in her 70s. I take long bicycle rides every chance I get. Share with us what you love about being 60, right? Share with us. Yeah, Kathy, I love that my filter is going away, dancing and laughing out loud. Yes. I've seen Kathy dance. I've seen her, right? We're going to dance. We're going to dance. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So how did we do? How did we do on this video? Anybody over 60 feel like I gave you a word? Or did I waste your time? Tell me. Okay. Tell me. Uh, yeah. Oh, so let me show you what I'm wearing. I'm going to show you my shirt and my shoes. Okay, hold on. Okay, as you may have heard, I'm in Houston to see Beyonce. Concert is tonight. I'm so excited. I'm wearing, <laughs> I am sparkling. Uh, this looks more silver than it looked before. It be when I bought it, when I got it, I was like, this is a little too gold, but it's, it's, a, it's okay. I think she'll like it. I took the shoulder pads out. It had some really, really pronounced shoulder pads. I took the shoulder pads out myself. And uh, I'm sparkling. Okay, this is it. <laughs> I'm sparkling. I got a see-through bag. I have a thing inside right now, but I got a see-through bag. The plastic is still on the handle. Got a see-through bag, and then I have my shoes, which also sparkle. The shoes are gold. I wear sneakers now. Okay, I, once I quit work in at 41, I don't know that I've worn. I've probably worn heels maybe four or five times since then. Most to funerals, right? I've, <laughs> only time I wear high heels today. <laughs> only time I wear a shoe that is not a sneaker, a flip flop, a, a slipper, right? Is when I am, um, is funerals basically. Yeah, right? So I've got myself some sneakers and a. <laughs> I can't. 
can't wait. I can't wait. So this is what I'm wearing to see Beyonce. I'm really excited. Her tour is called Renaissance. Renaissance is a renewal or a rebirth. And people have reported leaving that show, feeling renewed, feeling reborn. Okay, so I'm going to get my renaissance. I'm getting mine. Y'all not going to get a renaissance without me. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm just wearing some jogging pants. I'm really wearing jogging pants with that because I need to be comfortable. Um, yeah, like, you know, jogging pants, tapered leg, you know, jogging pants. Uh, yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sparkling. I'm sparkling. She's going to see me. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. So the Houston Exodus Summit gang is meeting. Uh, the, yeah, there's an Exodus Summit meeting here in Houston in about an hour and change, which I need to get ready for. Uh, so I need to go. But okay, so I asked you, the pants are like deep plum. I don't know why I'm looking over here knowing the pants are over there. I don't feel like getting up to get them. They're like purplish, plumish sweatpants. Not, but not sweat, you know, jogging pants. Yeah, they're neutral. I'm going to call it a neutral. They're not black, but I'm wearing them as if they were just black pants. Yeah, so I need to get myself ready for that. The Exodus meetup in, in Houston is today. Exodus Summit meetup in Panama, October 15th. I think Rashida is serious that she's going to do one in Puerto Vallarta on that same day, October 15th, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. So you have choices, choices, choices. And then don't forget that we're getting together in Cape Town, February 16th through 20th. That is a ticketed event, right? So there's a difference between the meetups that are very informal and the meetup that is like, we're doing things and we have this planned and we have buses and we have, right? So the formal meetup in Cape Town, South Africa is February 16th through 20th. There are still tickets available. And if you're in the Exodus Summit Facebook community, you, you'll see how to get the Cape Town ticket meetup, Cape Town meetup ticket. Oh, you're going to be there. Okay, I'll see you. See you in an hour. Yeah, this hotel has a shuttle. So I shouldn't have to, it's only, he said, it's, the man was like, it's about a seven minute walk. And I was like, mm, can the shuttle take me? He said, yeah, because <laughs> it's humid. Okay. It's humid here. I'm not going to be getting there all sweaty. Y'all be wanting to take pictures. <laughs> Y'all going to be wanting to take pictures. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm taking the hotel shuttle. Thank you. <laughs> he was like, yeah, they'll take you anywhere within five miles. I said, well, I don't know where this restaurant is. He was like, oh, it's like a seven-minute walk. I was like, mm-mm. <laughs> and there's a um, tram right in front of the hotel, too. I might take the tram back because I don't have transportation planned for tonight. So I think I may take the tram back today and then see if that'll work for the concert tonight. And, t and yeah because I don't have transportation. I know I could get, I think I could still get the shuttle to take me, but I doubt the shuttle would pick me up tonight. So I need to figure, what I'm saying is I'm working out in my mind, reminding myself that I need to figure out the transportation. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's what's happening. That's what's happening around here. I'm using my location freedom and my time freedom. I'm putting them to use. Having the ability to be where I need, want to be in the world, to do what I want, is such a gift. Not too long ago, when I had a job and I wanted to do something, you would not believe the rigmarole I had to go through to get to use my own vacation days, right? Carol, can you work this shift for me? Arnisha, can you work? Uh, uh, Arnisha, come in. Can I? Can you cut? Arnisha, can you cut? Can you come in on your night off so I can teach you my job so that you can work for me on vacation, right? Like ridiculousness, ridiculousness just to go away for three, four or five days, right? Whereas in this new iteration of my life, this new chapter, I have location freedom. I have time freedom and I have the money to use them, right? A whole new picture for my life, a whole new approach to things. It's so nice to have. Some of you have it and aren't using it. Use it. Okay? Use it for those of us who couldn't. <laughs> Some of you don't have it yet. If you don't have it yet, 
This is why Exodus Summit 2023 exists. Exodus Summit 2023 has the theme of location freedom, financial freedom, and time freedom for Black women. And our speakers are coming in to give you the tools to get those things, right? Location freedom just means you can be where you want to be in the world, right? House sitting, remote work, do those things for you, even without being financially independent, right? Even if you need to make money to eat and live, you still can have location freedom. Time freedom means my time is mine and I decide what I do and what I don't do. You can have time freedom even when you still have to make money to live. I still need to make money to live. I still do work. This is work, right? I'm talking to you right now. This is work. YouTube pays me. <laughs> YouTube pays me for this. Can you believe it? <laughs> and it means, oh shoot, thank you, Rashida. It means, but time freedom means that I get to decide where my time goes and doesn't go. Nobody can say, here's a thing you need to spend your time working on. No. I decide. That's freedom. It's wonderful. Okay? So please come to Exodus Summit 2023. If, so be, some of you have asked before about how you can donate a ticket to someone else because it's a thing this community has done. Uh, you've put together money to, to send a woman, to send women to Exodus Summit who otherwise would not be able to afford to go. Uh, I'm, gonna about, I'm about to give you a couple of different links that you can use if you would like to put money together to send women or to pay for women, to pay for black women's tickets to Exodus Summit. I'm, gonna get a, I'm looking for the link right now. And it's called Amina. I think it's called Amina. <laughs> Hi, Amina. <laughs> Hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. I do need to go but I don't want to leave without doing this. Thank you for still being here, those of you who, who have been so patient. I'm going to my Google Docs. I'm going to narrate this process, and then I'm going to look for Amina in the search bar, and it's going to give me this. No, that's not where it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. So there are two ways if you want to put money in towards a black woman's ticket for Exodus Summit 2023. There are two ways. Did I not put it here? One more click. One more click. I'm getting there. Okay, I'm getting there. Copy. Paste with a space here. Okay. Okay. I think I did it. Okay. Okay. To send a black woman to Exodus Summit. Send any amount of money, any amount, okay? Because we're going to put pool it together for weekend passes. Send any amount to, okay? The cash app is Exodus Summit, right? And then the PayPal is Exodus Summit. It's pretty simple. All of that type in, all that searching for those two simple answers. <laughs> it's very simple. Exodus Summit on cash app or PayPal is how you can send a black woman to Exodus Summit 2023. We're putting money together to buy weekend passes for women who otherwise would not be able to attend. We uh, not This is not just, I would like a free ticket because they're not free tickets, they're gifted tickets. These are, for only, these are only for women who otherwise would not be able to come, okay? Not just, oh, I'd like a free ticket, okay? These are gifted, these are paid for by black women inside of the community. It's a wonderful thing that we do every year, okay? Exodus Summit, on Cash App or PayPal is how you can do that. Uh, yes. And I think now I've done <laughs> everything that I need to do before I go. Okay. So one more time, let me link to the Exodus Summit community on Facebook, which is exodussummit.com slash community. 
and then I'll link one more time to the actual summit, which is happening October 6th, which, which starts October 6th, which is really soon. Do y'all know that? You know, October is a week away and October 6th is less than two weeks away. Can y'all believe that? October is a week away. Does that sound wrong? Listen, if you don't ain't got time freedom, you need to get it because time is moving and you want to be in charge of your time. I'm telling you, you don't want to have somebody else be able to dictate what you do with your time because it is moving. It's October. Next week is October. I don't know if y'all knew that. <laughs> right? Next Saturday is September 30th. Next Sunday is October 1st. I don't know. I don't know what's happening either. Don't ask me. Okay. I don't know how that's possible, but it is. Okay. So join the Exodus Summit community and go ahead and register for Exodus Summit 2023. The weekend pass will give you access to the regular summit sessions, give you uh, 30 days of replays, whereas the all access pass gives you the regular summit sessions plus the keynote speaker sessions. Tabitha Brown, Rachel Cargill, Dr. Joy Harden Bradford, and that extra session with uh, the extra rest workshop with Octavia Rahim on building a deeper rest practice. Uh, also, we'll give you um, access to the salons, access to the small group breakout rooms where you'll meet black women who are into the thing that you're into, right? Okay? Come to Exodus Summit 2023. ExodusSummit.com. Get your ticket and come. Every year, black women come to the summit with just a hope and a ticket. And they leave with a plan. They leave with the beginning makings of a plan, right? What you need for this, whatever the new, new chapter in your life is going to be, all you need is a basic plan, right? Exodus Summit gives you time and space and the tools to get that plan together. All right. I, uh, I don't know. Sunny says time moves slow for children and no, no, that's Connie. Time moves slow for children. Time moves fast for children and slow for adults. Let me tell you, time is moving so fast. I'm an adult. I'm a super adult. Okay. <laughs> and time is moving so fast. It's moving so fast. I can't believe October is next week. I, it's, um, I don't understand it. It's so incomprehensible how fast this year is moving. I don't know. I don't know. So I don't know. I disagree. I disagree. It does not move slow for adults. I'm an adult. I'm a super adult. <laughs> and I can't get over it. Every time you turn around, it's Thursday. Like, it was just Thursday. How is it Thursday again? Every time. Okay? Thank you. Okay? So, yes, please hit the like button. If you think that there's some black women who, who would enjoy this conversation, this me, <laughs> me being an honorary 60-year-old, telling other 60-year-olds some, some stuff. If you think that there's some other black women interested, hit the like button. It really does tell YouTube that you think that you sh they should recommend it to some other people. Really, it works. Okay? So, please, take a second and like this video. And, um... Yes. Thank you very much for being here, for being so wonderful as always, for being such a wonderful community, uh, for being so kind and so patient with each other, with me. Remember to extend that same kindness, that same patience, and that same grace to yourself. Don't treat us better than you treat you. I'm going to have a great time at the meetup. Some of y'all, I'll see you there in just a few and I'm going to have a great time at the concert. I'll show you. I'll see if I can show you some stuff on Instagram. Um, I'm going to be there and enjoying it. I'm not going to be documenting things that much, but I will try to show you some stuff on Instagram. I'm at Vicarious, okay? So much. So nice to spend another Saturday with you guys. I'll see you again next Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Okay. Have a great day, friends. Thank you so much for being here and for, for hanging out. Bye, guys.